Hello everybody, uh, my name is Sean Murray and this is my Module 3 Discussion Board presentation. The first question was, there are many reasons to have a collection policy in place in the library. What are three reasons that you would consider most essential and why? Uh, my first reason is to protect intellectual access. One of the main objectives of schools is to prepare students to participate in a democracy. Participating in a democracy requires citizens to have intellectual access. According to our textbook, intellectual access addresses learners' rights to hear, read, and view information, to receive ideas, to express ideas, and to develop skills to receive, examine, analyze, synthesize, evaluate, and use information. Libraries as a repository for information have a huge responsibility in regards to protecting individuals' rights to access as much and as diverse information as possible. My reason, too, was to protect libraries against librarian self-censorship. Libraries serve diverse individuals and diverse communities. Library policies can help to ensure that librarians are collecting resources that are best for their library and their community rather than just works they like. Though librarians may not intend to seek out resources that conform to their own biases, we all cannot help but have certain preferences. Our backgrounds and experiences may shape the type of resources we are partial to, too, and those resources may not be what is best for the communities we work in. Policies need to set forth a systematic procedure for selecting resources that take into account the inclusion of diverse viewpoints and all topics and in various forms in order to ensure that we create diverse, well-rounded, and community-centered collections. My reason three was to ensure there is a process for people to share concerns about library resources. Communities should have a way to share their concerns about resources included in a library collection. This is important because sometimes works may need to be removed. Maybe a work is no longer accurate or maybe a work is not appropriate for a particular age group that a library is geared towards. Library policies need to set forth clear procedures and criteria for how these decisions are made. There are some controversial works that need to be included in a collection and having a set a procedure and criteria for this process legitimizes decisions on the inclusion of those works. Question two asked us to reflect on an article about self-censorship. The article that I found was What the Shelves Aren't Saying, an Exploration of Self-Censorship in High School Libraries. This article summarized a study by Alyssa Tudor and Jennifer Moore that's goal was to determine to what extent are high school librarians engaging in self-censorship. What, if any, are the relationships between a school's characteristics and the absent of controversial books. Uh, what they concluded uh, by looking at 90 Texas schools, um, or they, they looked at 90 Texas schools to see what percentage of 55 of the most banned books could be found in their collections. And what they found is that smaller schools tended to have less of those books. So they concluded that there was um, a possibility of self censorship going on there. So what is the problem with self censorship? Um, our textbook, uh, Marty in our textbook describes self-censorship as librarians' choices being colored by their personal values rather than commitment to intellectual freedom. Tudor and Moore consider another side of self-censorship. They define self-censorship as occurring when a librarian engages in self-preserving, self-defense mode to prevent potential conflicts and challenges with materials they see as controversial. Um, it's important to be aware of your own biases. Um, librarians' objective should be to build the best collection for the community they serve, to meet the objectives of their mission, and to protect intellectual freedom. Choosing resources based on personal preferences or avoiding certain resources out of fear are both going to hinder those objectives. So what I learned from this article, uh, prior to reading the article, I only considered self-censorship in the form described in our textbook. This article opened my eyes to the possibility of censorship being driven by fear of conflict, which I found kind of sad. Um, question three, what did I learn from children's collection development, good books or books kids like? Um, the author concluded that what makes a book good is having certain elements and that these elements can be found both in works that have traditionally been seen as good and also popular books. So both should be included in our collections. Um, and how will what I learned impact my collection? I plan on including both books that have traditionally been considered good and books that kids like, um, but some people may look down upon.